Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Vibration Fatigue Analysis for Piping Systems, including wells using EffiSafe and Verity. Our webinar will be about um, an hour long. We will have a 15 minute Q&A session at the end. So if you guys come across any uh, questions during the presentation, uh, please ask us and we will be happy to uh, answer those questions. I would like to get started with um, brief introductions to our team um, today. Um, a biased introduction will be given by uh, Shrikant, who is the Director of Simulation Services at VIAS. He has been at VIAS for two years now. Uh, Shri has over 10 years of um, advocacy experience in customer su support and um, consultancy for a range of diverse industries. He holds a PhD in solid mechanics from Brown University. Um, his email is listed on the screen and um, you guys can feel free to contact him if you have any questions. Um, we also have Arindam Chakraborty here. Uh, he is the uh, Vice President of Advanced Engineering at VIAS. Um, Chuck, uh, Dr. Chakraborty has a PhD in mechanical engineering from the University of Iowa and has 10 years of experience in solid mechanics and design, nonlinear FEA, fatigue and fracture mechanics, reliability analysis, composite structures in oil and gas, nuclear and structural design. His area of expertise are solid mechanics and design, ASME code based strength and fatigue uh, analysis, fitness for service um, assessment, a system reliability, component, component reliability and optimization and probabilistic analysis. His email is also listed on the screen and that's where he can be contacted. Next, I would like to introduce our main presenter today. Um, Subhadeep, he is our senior simulation engineer, and uh, Subhadeep has done his master's in mechanical systems design from IIT. He has worked with um, R&D division of multiple OEMs, and prior to VIAS, he was at DESO Systems for almost three years. Um, he has expertise in linear, nonlinear problem with uh, focus on contact and convergence related issues advanced um, explicit methodologies like CEL, um, SPH, NVH analysis and testing, um, uh, parametric, non-parametric optimization and automation through EyeSight and Tosca, uh, fracture mechanics and fatigue uh, calculation. So um, uh, with our intros um, out of the way, we will get started with a brief introduction to a bias. So uh, Sri, would you like to take over? Yeah, thank you. Uh, can you can listen to me? Yes. Yeah, okay. So hello everyone. Um, so I'll present a brief uh, introduction of VIAS team, organization, and our technical capabilities, and then I'll hand it over to Subhadeep. Uh, today's agenda for webinar would be this. Uh, it would be an introduction uh, of actually the fatigue itself, and then overview of vibration fatigue. Uh, frequency domain fatigue analysis will be presented in detail along with time domain fatigue analysis, uh, rain flow cycle counting method, uh, and then pros and cons of frequency domain approaches. Uh, and then we'll have specifically for weld fatigue, uh, uh, what, what would be the application as, as a verity uh, based on uh, FE safe. And then uh, Q&A followed by that. Uh, so that we'll conclude the webinar. Next slide, please. Yeah, thank you. So this is a company overview I would like to present to you in a few minutes. Uh, next slide, please. So who we are, uh, we are uh, basically a platinum war of Dassault Systems, Simulia, and we have uh, multiple industry experience uh, spanning oil and gas, machinery and equipment, petrochemical and process, nuclear and aerospace, medical devices, manufacturing and automotive. Uh, we have offices in Houston, our main uh, office is in Houston, but then uh, we have presence uh, other parts of US as well, in Chicago, Cincinnati, San Francisco, and Detroit. Uh, we have a very strong expertise in different uh, fields of engineering, solid mechanics, fluid mechanics, materials and corrosion, numeric analysis, optimization, reliability, data analytics. Our team consists of both the combination of PhD and masters in these fields. Uh, as I said, we are partner of Dassault Systems. Uh, we handle specifically Simulia products, Abacus, iSight, FeSafe, Tosca, but also uh, other brands like Ketia and Delmia too. Uh, our main activities include consultancy work and also providing training, um, training in uh, dissolved systems, Simulia products like Abacus, iSight, FeSafe, Tosca listed above. Um, and also we uh, do the software sales for Dassault system products. Uh, we also provide support for those products. So if you have uh, any issues in 
using the software application, we can help you with that. Um, and if it's of course uh, more of a long-term engagement, that will be like a training part, uh, and we can do a training more of a customized version too. If you have something specific to address your needs, uh, we can also do uh, help you out in automation and customization of your workflows. Uh, that's one of our main uh, strengths too. Next slide, please. Uh, some of our customers that we have uh, worked with uh, for FEA, we have some of these noted customers. Uh, there are also life sciences startups, which are confidential, we didn't list here. Uh, again, we also work with CFD area, and there are a uh, few of the customers at whom we worked with in the past. And again, in the data analytics area also. Next slide, please. Uh, we provided software services to these customers uh, that includes both sales and support and everything else that goes with that. And then uh, specifically training, I would like to mention that uh, we are an official trainer at, for Abacus, uh, specifically at Boeing. Um, most of the time we are very busy with our training courses at Boeing too, and other customers like uh, are listed here. Okay, next slide. So these are our technical capabilities. Uh, we can provide you uh, FEA services like specifically for component design and validation uh, based on simulation, of course. Uh, and we can also uh, help you out in modeling, say, fracture and damage mechanics. Uh, we have very good expertise in dealing with the codes like API, ASME, yeah. uh, ES. Um, I, think I hear some noise. I think someone has to mute themselves. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so we also provide you uh, provide services in uh, fracture and damage mechanics and specifically uh, adhering to standard codes, as I mentioned earlier, API, ASME, uh, and engineering critical assessment also studies uh, based on that. And then uh, design optimization reliability. Uh, if you have any specific agenda of, uh, say, reducing the mass of an object and uh, to maintain certain stiffness and meet the load criteria or loading scenarios uh, that can be done, again, using Dassault system products like Tosca, but also non-parametric, um, sorry, parametric optimization can be done through iSight and uh, same about reliability too. We also uh, undertake a vibration assessment and structure analysis based on that. Um, we are also having a good team uh, on in electromagnetic systems area uh, based uh, based on CST, uh, which is again a Dassault system product that was uh, acquired recently. Uh, we can provide design simulation optimization in that area too. Uh, we have again a strong team in multi-physics simulations, um, expertise with uh, in CFD flow analysis and thermal analysis. Uh, again, for of particular interest for this crowd would be a fatigue analysis, uh, both uh, stress and strain based. We can handle that very well too. Uh, we also have good expertise in composites modeling and analysis. So in case you have any issues in that area, please do approach us. Uh, also, we provide automation for your simulation. If there's any repeated task or something that you want to have a process workflow um, completely uh, automated, uh, like as in eyesight, we could do that for you. Uh, we also handle the digital mock-up development and systems engineering. Uh, there's uh, something related to electrical cabling, piping, and ducting. So any any of these areas and anything else that's not listed here, uh, do approach us and we can let you know if we can help you out in that. Next slide, please. So what's the value proposition? Uh, we are very committed to every client's success. We take their success as our success. So uh, it's a very uh, personal commitment that we undertake. Uh, and also we, of course, add value through our technical excellence and innovation. Uh, we all have a very strong domain knowledge in FEA and also CFT um, and other uh, and kind of spanning multiple industries, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, we can review your existing simulation workflow and process and maybe provide you a good feedback of how to improve that uh, for speed and usability. So that helps in your productivity also. Uh, we can provide customized training or standard training. Uh, again, it could be online or in-house or uh, on-site at our office. So please do approach us if you have any specific needs for uh, training of Abacus or any other Dassault system products, uh, definitely we could help you out with that. Uh, we also offer software development services like uh, uh, adding, uh, say, user subroutine, adding more functionality to Abacus through user subroutines or user elements and also Python scripts and, as, and so on, uh, which will help, out, help you out in the pre and post processing of your analysis. Uh, with that, I think I'll hand over to uh, Subhadeep. Subhadeep, please go ahead. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Go ahead. Thank okay, you. thank you. Okay, thank you very much. 
uh, my dear simulation aspirant uh, good morning good evening to you all best and wherever you are located in the globe right now so as you know that today's topic is basically the uh, high frequency fatty analysis or the vibration domain fatty analysis uh, of piping system uh, also including the world through variety okay so <clears throat> So before going into the depth of the fatigue, okay, I want to discuss that as you know, uh, so whenever you are going to do a fatigue simulation, you first need the stress analysis to be calculated correctly. Okay, so typically in a piping, uh, if you want to predict the stress in the piping, so there are different kind of loads and there are different kind of equipment attached to that. So the loads are typically the temperature and pressure fluctuation, weight of the whole piping system, environment load like wind and seismic load. And then also uh, if you're having some attachment which is connected to some kind of rotary system, it can create some vibration and bolt tightening as well a different kind of preloading scenario. So the piping stress analysis especially ensure that you have a safe operation and you extend the uh, longevity of the equipment, also minimize the piping layout uh, and support revisions. So, uh, so when you are doing the piping stress analysis, the things to be considered like if you are having a excessive plastic deformation or not, if there is any buckling scenario is happening because of the plastic instability or collapse. And also uh, it could happen because of the high or uh, high strain or the low cycle fatigue based kind of loading. And uh, so here you need to consider the membrane and bending stresses. Also, uh, there are different kind of codes like ASME and uh, API code, which can give you the uh, understanding of the surface limit of a particular kind of piping system of the pressure vessel or boiler. Uh, so now, uh, so typically these are the different kind of loads you have populated from um, different codes. So if, if you go to these, uh, you'll be able to understand like it almost uh, consider or includes all kind of load that could happen in a typical piping system. And those basically include the seismic load and uh, the operational load and, uh, if, and the different kind of environmental load. So I'll not, I'll not read through that one. So you can just read through that one later. So this webinar, uh, the, the record of the webinar is going to be available in the, in our YouTube channel. So if you go through that, you can, you can go through this particular kind of uh, occasional load that could happen in the, in the piping scenario. So now I'll actually try to go uh, actually inside the heart of the uh, webinar. So this is basically the uh, overview of the vibration fatigue. Okay. So whenever we are uh, trying to calculate the the damage of a particular uh, system. Okay. So uh, so the the damage could happen because of uh, the static load, or it could happen because of the cyclic load. So cyclic load, if it is coming into the nature, so it could be a, a periodic cycle, a non-periodic cycle, or it could be a very kind of random cycle. So so if you want to calculate the damage for so this kind of different kind of uh, vibration load so so then there are different kind of things you need to uh, uh, account for in the in the very first scenario okay so uh, <clears throat> so if you see like the structural or any mechanical systems are often subject to some kind of irregular loading and and if these loadings are known in advance that is like if you have done some experimentation then you can do some time domain analysis based on rain flow count and the linear damage accumulation etc to assess the fatigue damage uh, at the system service life. But when the service loading is not known, that is like if you are designing something at the design stage, uh, you can't do the experiment, neither you are having the uh, information of the accurate loading scenario. So then in that case, the random process theory or the frequency domain analysis can be an alternative useful tool in the fatigue assessment process. So in this particular webinar, we are focusing much more uh, on, the, on the frequency domain fatigue simulation rather than the time domain fatigue simulation. So time domain fatigue simulation uh, is available or is is basically uh, available in our uh, FSF software uh, long time before. Okay, now in 6.5 onwards, they have included this frequency domain uh, fatigue analysis. So 
so typically whenever you are working in the vibration domain so you need to uh, consider few of the thing like uh, if you are uh, if you need to account the dynamics of the systems or not and, and if you are having some kind of contact in the model so, so you need to understand like how linear is your structure so is it uh, globally non linear or uh, is it globally linear or can you assume it to be uh, linear for those region where your point of interest is lies and also you need to understand like can the transient effects can be safely neglected or not and uh, there is some kind of randomness in the systems then you have to understand that how important are statics in your uh, statistics in your process so is it possible that uh, to get an acceptable uh, safety, safety factor which would compromise and allow for the random nature of the consider process <clears throat> So uh, in the frequency domain uh, vibration, sorry, in the frequency domain fatigue analysis, typically, uh, so different approach like the critical plane searching approach and the probabilistic analysis. So these are possible. Okay, now we'll be uh, discussing about all those in the in the coming slides. So when you are uh, thinking like, should I go in the frequency domain vibration analysis or like should i do should i include the dynamics of the system or should i go with the static approach so the rule of thumb is that uh, for uh, for for checking the system to dynamics or not you have to compare the uh, largest frequency found in the loading history to the first regional frequency of the system so if you see here in the picture like uh, you are having the highest frequency that is found in the loading history is something like here and your first regional frequency is f1 which is basically at some distance away from the highest frequency available in the loading history so so the the rule of thumb is that uh, so if your uh, applied load is uh, uh, is having the frequency content which is like one third of the first natural frequency so you can consider to be a uh, static approach so you need not to go in the vibration domain fatigue analysis so this one by three factor is coming basically from the concept of magnification factor so if you know like if you are applying a load in a static way so the kind of displacement you are getting if you apply the load in, the, in a frequency domain with a with a particular kind of amplitude and frequency associated with that so then your your static displacement you actually get magnified by some value okay that that is basically the magnification value and we have seen that the magnification factor the uh, mf value is somewhat like uh, almost equivalent to one when your uh, uh, highest frequency found in the loading cycle is one third of the regional frequency and then from, from that's where the this particular scenario is coming or this particular concept is coming <clears throat> but but if your uh, highest frequency found in the loading cycle is uh, almost equivalent or higher than the regional frequency okay in that case you have to either go with the vibration domain fatigue analysis that is to either full transient analysis uh, that could be in the time domain or in the frequency domain uh, if you're working in the frequency domain, typically you work in the model superposition based transient analysis, or you work in the harmonic analysis or in the random vibration analysis approach. And this is the important factor to consider. So whenever you are shifting from time domain to frequency domain, so the main important factor is basically the um, ramping. Okay. So if you know, like for any systems, the equations of uh, 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 force and uh, force balance is basically like mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx is equal to f t. Okay, so here the c term plays a big role in the frequency domain. So typically, if you see, we are having a beam and we are trying to capture the stress at a point A, and when we are changing the damping value uh, from uh, four percent to five percent, and we see that the stress is changing by almost like. Uh, 25 percent okay and and then if you see the uh, fatigue calculation based on that kind of stress and you can see that there is 81.32 percent difference in the uh, fatigue life calculation so so the, this particular damping can introduce a huge error in the fatigue life prediction if you are not including the damping in a correct way <clears throat> And when we are once again going into frequency domain analysis, so we have to understand what kind of data we are having. So if your data is deterministic or it is a random data. So if your data, if it is a deterministic data, then it could be a non-periodic or periodic. And if it is almost like non-periodic, and then uh, then you can say like it's, it's almost periodic. Okay, so then you can basically approach this kind of uh, scenario in a different way. 
but when you are having a totally random stationary and ergodic data so so this particular approach will be a different approach in the in the in the vibration level fatty analysis so so that thing i'm going to discuss in the coming slides so when you are having a deterministic non periodic almost periodic loadings and when you are having a random stationary and ergodic kind of loading the two approach are basically based on either the steady state dynamic approach or based on the random vibration approach <clears throat> So to account for all these things, I'm introducing a, uh, a, a software which is intelligent enough to take into account all these different kind of scenarios, uh, and that is basically the AFISIP. So it's, it's fall under the Diesel System Simulia brand, and it support all the solver like it support abacus and sys ideas nest and pro mechanic and other kind of normal csv format input data so this input data typically consists of uh, the stress and the strain or uh, or the temperature data okay and uh, fcp is having already a inbuilt uh, material library which is having more than 500 material database so so once you are having a fcp you can directly access those data without any additional add-on and then uh, combined with this material data and uh, uh, stress and the input loading cycle or the duty cycle this duty cycle you can either obtain from experiment or you can generate using FSF signal processing so combining these three things you will be getting the uh, damage or the life of a particular component for a particular kind of uh, vari variable stress scenario and the supported output are basically something like abacus definitely hypermiss pattern fem view and can fix and if you map and ansys so so these are the different kind of output of the result you can often so you can view the result directly in either of these post processor so uh, as i told you before like that time domain vibration fatigue is available uh, i think it's more than eight years so uh, so but uh, so so this is a uh, right uh, so it's basically uh, what it does is that once you are having a ODB or the result file, so so once you read the result file, okay, it will be reading the model stress value, okay, and the model dynamic responses, and then it's it's uh, uses some standard scale or combine to create the stress history for each element and node, and that stress history is going to be um, uh, used for calculating the fatigue life. But when you are working with a frequency domain, it's basically limited to a Dirichlet method with one minus stress. So this particular frequency domain method with the link, uh, I am going to discuss in the coming slide. Uh, so here, uh, one thing I want to say, like if you are working with the frequency domain fatty analysis and if you are having an ODB file, if you read the ODB file, FSAP will automatically generate, generate the PSG data. So this PSG data or the probability uh, sorry, or the power spectral density. So this data is uh, something like the, the the energy content in a particular kind of uh, time history data. So that thing I'm going to discuss in the in the coming slides. So now we are going into the heart of the presentation with a little bit of theory and the background. Okay. So. <clears throat> So for the first time in FSF 6.5, so the pure frequency domain uh, vibration analysis is, sorry, pure frequency domain fatigue analysis has been included. So so this is a example of a, a frame of a particular kind of racing car. And you can see like there are four different engine mounting point from where the uh, different kind of vibration uh, uh, loading can come into the frame, okay? and so what it does is that uh, so uh, so once you run four different uh, loading scenario in in abacus or in other solver so once you include that odv in the fc for analysis it will automatically generate the psg based on the um, uh, based on the odv or the result file okay and and it will be automatically creating the correlation matrix between the different psg psg data so here you can see like uh, so we are basically inputting four PSD uh, loads uh, in in four different legs, okay. And typically this uh, in fatigue the the phasing between the loads is very important. So if the user has like the cost spectral information, uh, we can also use that in our methodology. And and this written the phasing information, okay. So in the finite element model, uh, so basically the standard procedure is that if you see in the in the in the bottom picture, so we basically do uh, a a 
a unit load PSG analysis, okay? And once you do a unit load PSG analysis, so you get a, a frequency response function, we call it like FRF. So the frequency response function is like output by input. So if your input is becoming unit load PSG, then whatever the output you are getting, that is basically becoming the FRF function, okay? So, so with that FRF, what we do is that uh, we combine this particular FRF uh, with the uh, input PSG. So this is the actual PSG you are getting from the experiment or from um, from your, I mean to say, calculation or your assumption. So combined with the unit stress uh, FRF and the PSG, you get the actual uh, PSG uh, at, a, at a particular point. Okay, so this PSG uh, includes actually the Bonmises PSG data or it could be any other data. But in FECF, we are mainly interested in the stress. So it will be the Bonmises uh, PSG of the uh, actual PSG uh, of the uh, of the actual PSG input loading. Okay, and then on top of that, you'll be applying the critical planes approach to find the plane where the uh, damage of the so or the damage will be the maximum and the fatigue life will be the minimum. So this is typically the approach. Like so, so this is the frequency driven fatigue analysis flowchart. So the gray color boxes are the required input data, uh, the model analysis, the steady state dynamic response, and the input PSG and material properties and analysis definition. So these are basically the inputs. Okay, and we then combine the model analysis and the and the participation factor. Uh, by generating the frequency response function and then this frequency response function are further scaled by the input PSG and it this yields into like von Mises and the equivalent PSG projected onto the critical planes and then the PSG are uh, used to compute the uh, spectral moment uh, spectral moment of uh, <coughs> which are the cornerstone of the probability density function so so this so this particular spectral moment is basically sorry this particular probability density function is basically responsible for um, calculating the cycle counting okay and ultimately once you have the cycle counting uh, and of the different stress range and the stresses you can calculate the life and fatigue of the component so so this is the whole flow chart you can see what you basically use in the vibration domain fatigue analysis okay and if you go through the uh, fcf window so this is like you start with the uh, opening the odb file and there you basically say like open finite element model for psc analysis and then you read the uh, different odb file okay and from the odb file it will directly uh, take the model participation factor okay and and you can include the psg if you're having certain kind of psg which is basically uh, accumulated from experiment or from uh, or from um, signal processing tool and so this is the kind of loading setting you basically do for every PSG block. You, you define the uh, length of the PSG block, okay? So it, which is basically the seconds. Like for 34 seconds, you capture a data, okay? And that data is basically in the time domain and you convert into the frequency domain and then you get the, get the PSG matrix okay? or the PSG power spectral density of the whole 34 second data, okay? And, and that one you are basically specifying here. Okay, so if you're having different kind of PSG, so you can you can uh, define those in the analysis, sorry, in the loading setting by using different kind of blocks. Okay, like those are called like uh, PSG block, you can say like that. Okay, and and out of, uh, so, and from the ODB, as you know, like it can automatically take into account the modal participation factor. So if you're working with Abacus, the ODB itself will be including the MPF value. Uh, but if you're working with other server, probably you need to request for additional file to include the modal participation factor. <clears throat> So uh, this uh, picture is pretty much self-explanatory. So it basically shows the influence of the participation of each mode in a dynamic response. And if you do a quick analysis, it reveals that the fourth mode is a second order of magnitude uh, lower than the first mode. And for this case, the first three modes can represent quite well the dynamic behavior of a component. So similar sensitivity analysis should be performed by whoever wants to best understand a system or component and speed up the computing time. So a important point of this slide is that uh, the data points are clustered around the peaks in the frequency response. So FECF support the PSG, PSG uh, with unequally spaced sample. And this basically improves the accuracy and the speed of the analysis. 
and this shows uh, the uh, the frame example okay where we have gone through the process of doing the fatigue life prediction and you can see that uh, one example like uh, input psg upload going to one point and on the right is uh, that an example of stress response at one node in the model and these are the fatigue like contours with the red as a hotspot in the at this point uh, on the finite element model so there are a number of advantages to working in the frequency domain uh, so the the advantage is like it is very fast probably the two order of magnitude faster than the working with the low long signal in the time domain and it's been the most uh, requested feature of fec for for many years now and that is uh, typically included in 6.5 or so which is introduced in 2014 and 15 and <clears throat> and so so also uh, it is having another one thing like it combines a very sophisticated treatment of the psg with the advanced critical plane searching technology uh, so which is the heart of our fatigue damage calculation now i'll be going through a, a, a little bit uh, description about the rainfall cycle counting method okay so as you know like uh, when you are discussing like the psg so psg is a function that describes the energy content distribution of a quantity over the frequency range so it's basically uh, uh, i mean to say uh, uh, expressed in, in terms of g square per hertz okay so <clears throat> So obviously, what we can have uh, one PSG of displacement force, acceleration, velocity, and and these are called the input PSG, and or also we can have the PSG of the stay, stay, and reaction force, which are called the output PSG. Okay. So a mean square value is obtained by an integration of the PSG function with respect to the frequency. <clears throat> so once you calculate the area under the PSG, you, you get the variance of the signal and 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 then you, you find the moment of the psg okay and that moment of the psg is further going to be uh, <clears throat> further going to be integrated uh, over the time to get the uh, to get the uh, number of positive slope uh, zero crossing the crossing per unit term okay so I'll say a little bit about the fatigue analysis. So we have got PSG of stresses at node, and what we need to do is that convert that into something we can do a fatigue analysis from. So we do that by taking the moment of the PSG, uh, as I shown in the previous uh, slide, okay, about the axis, and that is basically the zero hertz axis. Then we can generate some really useful fatigue information from those moments. For instance, the second and the zeroth moment give us the number of times the signal crosses zero with a positive slope, and the fourth and second moments uh, gives us the number of peaks per uh, <clears throat> per unit time. So we could calculate the RMS value of a stress history as well using the area under the PSG curve. So if we make an assumption that uh, so this is the Grossian process what we are seeing right now. Okay, uh, so then we have the complete description of our four and four uh, uh, of our fatigue analysis process. Okay, so we basically take the different order of the uh, uh, moments, sorry, different like first, second, third, and fourth moment, and 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 by using those moments, we basically calculate the number of cycle. So so this was a report for the wind energy industry. Okay, it looks at the magnitude of cycle and the number of cycle is it's like a cycle histogram. It compared the history you get if you uh, uh, rainflow count the time history of strain with the one you get from the PSC. And you can see they are virtually identical. Okay, and if the distribution of the rainflow cycle is virtually identical, then the calculation of fatigue life will be virtually identical as well. So uh, these are a few of the uh, notes on uh, signal processing. As you know, in FECP, uh, so we are having a uh, signal processing tool. Okay. So, uh, so once you are getting a time domain data, so we, we, we basically get the time domain representation as shown in the picture. Okay. <clears throat> so you can convert this particular <clears throat> time domain data, data into frequency domain by using the discrete Fourier transformation. And in the in the in the second approach, like the PSG can then be calculated at every discrete frequency by combining the Fourier coefficient. Okay, and then you find the cross correlation function, which are defined in the equation three. And similar to equation two and the equation four, we find the cross spectral density. 
okay and the correlation and psg can be linked by means of uh, these equations the equation five okay <clears throat> so this is called like winner kinchin relationship and here a little discussion about the uh, uh, pros and cons of the frequency domain approach as i said before like so this is one particular example so i have a beam is excited at its first resonant frequency of 10.3 hertz and by an acceleration of 1g and, and it's taken like 70484 time points to reach a steady state response so so if you see like so this time which is basically a transition domain so to reach from a uh, zero uh, stress to a steady state stress range okay so it takes some time so if you neglect that particular scenario that transition domain so uh, so you you can go into the frequency domain fatty analysis but if you think like this particular transition zone is uh, actually a very useful in in the fatigue life prediction uh, so in that case really the frequency domain can create some error in the analysis okay so so in the time domain analysis you basically calculate the stabilization time as well and and you take into account that that cycle that cycles as well but in in frequency domain you don't take into account that one <clears throat> so so this is one of the problem of when you are working the frequency domain because you are basically including the steady state response you are not including the transition response okay and that includes some error at the same time if you are having a long time history uh, uh, sorry long time loading data so working with the time domain will be very much time consuming and once again the uh, the the calculation of the fatigue life based on the time domain calculation is, is also very much uh, compute intensive and it takes time uh, typically the frequency domain is much more faster uh, ideally in the in the pre-processing phase where you are basically doing the uh, normal stress analysis to uh, to something like the steady state dynamic approach or the model uh, transient approach and then you take that odb into the if you say and you further do the fatigue life calculation so these two process both are very much faster compared to the time domain analysis so that's why if you're having a long time domain data <clears throat> and and if you can somehow uh, i mean to say represent the data uh, by either of the random scenario or by some kind of periodic scenario so going with a frequency domain approach will be much more easier and faster compared to the time domain now uh, we'll be discussing about the fatigue uh, of uh, wells uh, using a particular uh, add-on of FSA, which is called Verity, which is developed by Battle and later on, um, uh, uh, Mr. Ritter and Dessel have uh, included that on in their portfolio, similar portfolio. So when you are uh, having uh, the uh, well so there are typically two kind of oil i'm showing here and there are different kind of failure can happen in the uh, welding zone so if you see a t weld or a c oil kind of scenario so it can have a toe failure a root failure fission failure and throat failure so the the location of the failure uh, like where the toe failure happen and the root failure happen and the throat failure happen those are shown in the picture uh, so the verity actually can take into account uh, the uh, the uh, the fatigue life calculation for different kind of failure mode so it can predict the toe failure fusion failure and throat failure and root failure uh, very much accurately uh, and and there is a lot many advantage uh, of this one okay so i'll be discussing that on later on so uh, the variety development started with battle as i told you before so so here i'm just showing you a particular uh, world which is modeled by using the solid element so it need not to be a solid element so you can model the world uh, either by using cell element or even the beam element or even it could be modeled by different kind of fastener as well <clears throat> so here the main advantage of verity is that uh, it simply is it's simply actually uh, take into account the world by itself so you need not to uh, say like which one is two which one is root and which one is uh, uh, going to fail by fusion failure so if you define the domain where the uh, where the world is located or if you define the element set of the world so it will automatically find out the two root and the fusion fusion failure by itself okay and here one thing is there are like uh, it's, it's required the nodal forces of the uh, well well set so so apart from the stress in the world it it reads the nodal forces as well 
okay so once you include the nodal forces and the stresses it will calculate the actual stresses and the process is actually discussed later on so so once you are having a design so what you do basically do analysis in either of the uh, fe solver so typically in the abacus we are having uh, different kind of extension to quickly uh, do the stress analysis for different kind of geometries including weld gears or, or tubular kind of arrangement or composites okay so by using the extension you can quickly find the oil stress and from the analysis you basically uh, find out the uh, results like the stress strain and the temperature okay and then you take those inputs in the fe shape and and you calculate the loads now so the loads can be uh, so here is one interesting factor that also so the loads can be uh, actually taken either from experiment like you can uh, apply some kind of accelerometer and you can get the history of the loads so like the acceleration or the time history data okay but there is another one thing like when you are calculating or when you are when you are experimentally measuring the displacement acceleration and velocity at a particular inputs so that inputs has to be gone into the abacus in the in the very first stage when you are doing the abacus analysis but in fc it actually asks you for the history of the load it doesn't ask you for the history of the displacement okay now finding the loads time varying loads in uh, through using the accelerometer is not possible so what is suggest here is that so there is a uh, uh, numerical tool which is developed by wolf technology wolf chart technology that is called true load and it's basically says that so if you can attach some strain gauge at a particular location of your uh, in your model so it can accurately calculate the load uh, from from different point where the load can come okay and and this is very much i mean to say validated and and people in the industry who are not knowing what kind of loading is coming from their uh, source of vibration okay so by using this true load approach they can um, accurately calculate the loads okay and so once you are having the load in the as an input to the fe shape then what you do is that you calculate the life and life typically there are different scenarios what you can calculate so you can calculate the crack initiation okay so the crack initiation is something like uh, so after how many cycles the crack can be initiated and even you can uh, do the uh, 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 I mean to say the crack growth analysis as well. So that crack growth analysis is basically based on some kind of uh, deep opening displacement method. Okay, and so if you if you are uh, if your uh, design is not uh, having the sufficient amount of design life, then you can go with redesign and you can go through the whole cycle. Again, and this is how we can do optimization. And if it is failing, then then if you are okay with the failure after a certain number of cycle and you want to understand like uh, after initiation of crack also, so how many time does it take to exactly have the catastrophic failure or the, or the crack uh, to be growth uh, grows into a particular kind of sizable amount which can cause the catastrophic failure so you can do further crack propagation analysis to extend it finite able method or the fracture mechanics approach and uh, so uh, so in the FCF, apart from the welding uh, fatigue calculation so there are uh, different kind of other add-ons available so typically with FCF, the default approach is like the conventional metal fatigue analysis so in FCF, if you if you're having the license without any add-on you can uh, actually predict or you can actually calculate the fatigue life of of any of the conventional metal without any add-on but if you're working in the welded joint rubber composites or thermomechanical so you need to buy the add-ons so which are like verity efficient rubber efficient composites and efficient turbo life now i'll be going into a little detail i'll be going into the detail of the actual verity based structure sorry verity based uh, fatigue life calculation of the world so in efficient uh, the the default approach without any add-on is something like uh, based on the bs7068 code okay so the so if you are having a fatigue analysis which is based on the nominal stress so this bs7068 is basically based on a nominal stress okay so it doesn't account for the mean stress uh, of your loading cycle so then what happened typically that uh, for different type of oil you are having different fatigue strain as you can see like you are having different kind of 
uh, so you need to specify that what class of world you are having and on top of that uh, if you see like the SN curve uh, based on different stress range is also different so if you're having different oil join and different kind of stress ranges the 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 ASN curve become different. So you need to select the ASN curve uh, based on log many uh, predefined inputs. Okay. And then only your life will be calculated a little bit accurately. But once again, here uh, the calculation is done based on the stress you obtain from the from the previous fatigue analysis. Sorry, from the previous abacus analysis or from the previous from the uh, okay sorry so uh, here basically the fatigue life is calculated based on the previous uh, uh, analy stress analysis from either abacus or any other fe software uh, sorry finite element software so uh, here uh, the calculation of the fatigue life prediction is very much sensitive to the mesh and also uh, it also uh, if you are working with based on a nominal approach then there is two decision need to be considered like how far away from the well the toe should be to should you be used before you think the stress are nominal and also uh, you think like the SN, SN curve if you're having a complex kind of welded joint so finding a proper SN curve for calculating the fatigue life is very difficult so this approach is somehow is okay for uh, typically simple kind of welding problems and then also it is once again the mesh sensitive so you need to make sure that you are calculating the stresses properly so now in if you save this variety approach uh, actually uh, suggest you a, a, a different uh, different kind of scenario like uh, so you you can do the uh, previous uh, stress analysis from any FA code uh, without accounting for the uh, messages in a very much accurate way. So you can have any kind of mess. It could be very coarse mess or it could be a very fine mess. But typically the suggested thing is that you should have uh, sufficiently fine mess, not very fine mess. Okay. And then what happened is that once you do a, a FE analysis, you found the stresses and the nodal forces from in the in the welding zone. And then by using that nodal forces and uh, stresses, you try to calculate the structural stresses. Okay, and typically in I, typically in any FE analysis, the nodal forces and displacement are the most reliable solution quantity. Okay, and equilibrium conditions are only guaranteed in terms of nodal forces at node, but not in terms of stresses. So, so the the welded locations are especially a zone where the singularity happen. Okay. So uh, the main uh, requirement for doing the oil fatty analysis is that you have to have a consistency in the stress determination, and also your uh, uh, stress has to be a mis mis insensitive, and also you have to uh, uh, you have to uh, take into account the robustness of the complex structure. Okay, and you should always get the same answer. So, so here, what you do is that we single, we do a single SN curve uh, approach. Okay. So, what you do is that once you are having the stress and the nodal forces, uh, you calculate the membrane stress and the bending stress, and by combining both those two stresses, you get the structural stress. So now, if you see that if you are having the fat SN curve, okay. So if you are having the SN curve. And that SN curve, if you take into account the uh, stress range and the num number of cycle, you can see that it is scattered into a big domain. So if you can't have a, a one uh, SN curve for different kind of stress range, but once you are having the structural stress based approach, so these all these SN curve collapse into a single curve. Okay, so that's why in the variety approach, you need not to have a very uh, accurate material property, neither you need the oil material property. So you just have a one SN curve by using that one SN curve, you can calculate almost for any kind of world, you can calculate the actual fatigue life. <clears throat> so uh, this is one case study which is done uh, in the initial phase, and you can find this particular uh, table in this particular. Uh, um, I mean to say in this particular link, which is like fatigue.org at the world. And here we are having two different mesh for this kind of T world. And in one case, we are having a very fine mesh in the oil location. In another case, we are having a very coarse uh, mesh at the oil location. So there are different people who has predicted the life. The participant one has predicted the life based on 
PS760 at class W and class G, and he got a very lesser number of cycle. And in participant two has done a hand calculation and he has found 30,000 cycle, which is very less compared to the actual experimental test data. And then the participant three has done the 3D model full penetration, then 10% penetration, 50% and 90% penetration based approach. And he got a very uh, high number of uh, fatigue cycle. And then uh, we have calculated based on the variety mess insensitive approach. So for different kind of ports and finer mess, uh, our fatigue life prediction is very much near to the actual test result. And then definitely the other other approaches also has been uh, has been done, but neither of those approaches are close to the uh, result we found from the variety. So this ensure that our uh, our variety approach is very much uh, accurate and. And, and, and it is very much adaptable for the industry use as well. So with this, I want to end the uh, webinar for, for today, okay? And if you are having any questions, so you can type in the question box right now. And apart from, so when you are typing the questions, I, I want to discuss a little bit about the uh, trainings we are offering. So in upcoming days, we are having a schedule, uh, we have a schedule few of the trainings in the upcoming days. So if you want to attend, you can go through that. At the same time, I'll be waiting for a few minutes to uh, get the questions from your side. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank I just so want much. to add. This is uh, Shri. Yeah, Shri. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Subhadeep. Um, so I just want to add that I actually uh, share some news with you. We have recently opened uh, an office in India, Vias office uh, subsidiary in India. So we do offer the same kind of uh, services as we do in US there. Uh, we have, uh, of course, there also we are the partner of Dassault Systems and uh, India, and we are working closely with the group there. And so um, all the Indian customers, and uh, please do reach out to us too. We can uh, have a discussion and help you out in any of your situations that you may have uh, that we could step in. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, Sri, and thank you, Subhadeep. That was a great presentation. Uh, so, um, everybody, we are taking questions now. So, please feel free to uh, type in your questions, and we will get them answered. Um, so, I'm seeing that we have our first question. Um, Subhadeep, would you like me to read it to you? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm reading it. So, okay. I have a pipe which has constant internal pressure, temperature. And additionally, it is subject to vibratory load. So how to calculate fatigue life in such case? Okay, so so this process is uh, very straightforward, but one thing to understand that uh, if your vibratory load is a, uh, a random kind of vibration or it, it is a periodic kind of vibration. So, so what typically happened that you need to do a stress analysis where uh, in the first step, you have to apply the internal pressure and temperature, and then you have to calculate the stress. And if your loading cycle is very much periodic in nature, so you can do your time domain transient analysis, and and you can uh, use the whole history of the stress in the FECF to calculate the fatigue life. Okay, and if it is very much random in nature, so on top of doing the static analysis, you have to go into the uh, linear dynamics approach where you need to have a pre stress uh, model frequency analysis, and on top of that, you can do a SSG approach to calculate the FRF function and generalize displacement. And combining these two and the actual loading, so you will be getting the uh, fatigue life of the of the of the piping joint or the piping system uh, accurately so uh, but on top of that i am not saying that you are not including uh, any of the point of interest as well so if it is well so definitely you have to approach for the variety as well <clears throat> Thanks, um, Subhadeep. So I'm seeing some questions about the webinar recording. So I want to let everyone know that this session has been recorded and we will send it out to everybody shortly after the webinar ends. Um, and we have another question here, Subhadeep, mm -hmm. if you want to take this one. Uh, can you read it, please? I can't see it, actually. Sure. Uh, came to know developer Dr. Dong has left and joined different companies. So what is the future of Verity? Oh, <laughs> and that's uh, an interesting yeah, question. Yeah, this is Harinam here. Mm, I, I, I personally don't know him, but I mean, it's of course, it was his project at Bethel Memorial. Um, 
so Duso has has now the Verity software, and they they are working closely uh, with BetHelp. Um, I think generally this kind of thing uh, is also depends a lot of the time on on the company itself. So in in that sense, I I don't see much is gonna affect. And anyways, there are discussion about uh, modifying some of the formulation for the future. Like at the code level, there are some discussions going on. So as as a community, uh, people are looking into this method and also and whatever he has already developed uh, is uh, is gonna be there. So I don't I don't see any immediate uh, problem with that. Thank you. So Pankaj is having another one question. Like right now, Verity does not consider minstress effect. How life will be same at different R ratio? Okay, so. Uh, yeah, so that's a good question, but uh, in Variety 2018 onwards, so they have some approach called uh, TV approach. Okay, so previously it was Dillick approach, so now it's TV approach. So with that, uh, you can actually address the mean and the residual stress effect. Okay, and definitely uh, you can uh, you can uh, give the what is uh, what is on the damage accumulation or damage evolution based on the narrow band or the broadband distribution. So, so this is now available. So that means variety does consider the minstress effect now. Yeah. Okay, we have another question. Which stress component should be used for fatigue analysis? I saw Vaughn Mises stress in one of the slides, but was under the impression that one of the principal stress components should be used to calculate the stress range to be used with SN approach. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, so whenever you are working with the time domain fatigue analysis, so you basically uh, take the uh, take the calculation, sorry, take the all the six stress component and based on that you calculate the principal stress, maximum and the minimum principal stress, and then you calculate the fatigue life. But when you are going into the vibration domain fatigue analysis where your vibration is kind of a random data, okay, so like the, so you, they, basically there you, uh, you calculate the PSG of the for my stress. You don't take into account the maximum or the minimum principal stress. So in the in the random process, you take into account the uh, on my sis, PSG of the on my stress. And based on that, you calculate the fatigue line. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, it's only applicable for the random domain data. Okay, I have another question here asking, does VIAS provide trainings in India? So, um, Arindam, uh, do you, would you like to answer that one? Can you repeat that one? Um, uh, does VIAS offer trainings in India? Uh, VIAS offers training in India? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, my connection is not good here. Uh, yes, I mean, okay, so we are, uh, we just, uh, uh, starting our operations there and all so now we are ready to offer training so and we'll be uh, I'm, I, I need to check with my team but we are supposed to already uh, put out a training calendar uh, and if those dates and topics doesn't fit your schedule then always uh, feel free to contact us so uh, yeah to answer your question yes we are, we are moving forward to provide training in India as well thank you Arindam so um, as of now, these are all the questions we have. Uh, we still have a couple more minutes on the schedule. So uh, if anybody has any last minute questions, please send them our way. If not, then we can conclude the webinar. So we'll just wait a minute um, for any additional questions and. Yeah, and can you, uh, so we are putting this on our YouTube channel, right? And okay. then. Uh, yes. So and also maybe you can you can send everyone our uh, company LinkedIn. Uh, mm -hmm. So if they uh, follow us over there, they will yes. get all the notification and all the links. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that, we will that's do kind that. Of our yes. total, uh, communication point. So if you uh, follow us on our LinkedIn, you will get all the information from us very easily. Yeah, absolutely. The LinkedIn link and uh, website link and YouTube link, yeah. all of that will be shared. Uh, with our audience today. So it seems like we have one last question here. 
mean stress consideration for random vibration analysis with TB approach is there for non-welded part? My question was for welded part. So, Badeep, do you want to take this one? Oh, I, I don't know if they have any connection issues, maybe. Um. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. we can. Yeah, so the TV approach uh, for non oled part is there, as you know, right? But for oled part, I need to check it. So I believe probably in FSF 2019, they have mostly included, but I need to check. I can confirm it once I check it. Yeah, we can, uh, we can follow up with you uh, to better answer your question. Yep. Okay, it seems like that was our last question for today. Um, so I think we're good to conclude the webinar. Uh, thank you everybody for joining us and thank you to our presenters for the amazing uh, job they did. And I hope that all of you guys have a great um, rest of your day. Thank you, take care. Thank you. Thank you, bye. Yeah, thank you everyone, bye-bye. Bye-bye.